Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm here at the Manatee Viewing Center in Tampa Bay at the Big Bend Power Plant for Tampa Electric. And here is a Manatee Viewing Center. This episode is going to be all about everything you need to know about Florida's manatees. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. So this is a Nature at Your Door episode I filmed here near Tampa, Florida. And this is the Tampa Electric Big Bend Power Station. When temperatures get cool, manatees are attracted to warmer springs and power plants, apparently. And so when this power plant went into operation and it began using water from the bay for cooling purposes and turning that water back into the bay at a warmer temperature, the manatees discovered it. And actually this year, there was a record number of manatees here at the Tampa Electric in mid-January. Tampa has done a great job here with viewing platforms, tile boardwalks, environmental education center, and of course, these boardwalks where you can view manatees up close. I've stayed here for hours on my visit, watching these lumbering, gentle giants move through the water. Some apparently solitary, some with their offspring or calf right by their side. The manatees you can see here at the Apollo Beach Teco Manatee Viewing Center can weigh up to a thousand pounds and they're typically about nine to ten feet. There are some individuals that have been measured and grow to 13 feet and weigh almost 3,500 pounds. So when I say they're gentle giants, I really mean it. Manatees are completely herbivorous, meaning they eat only plants. And so they're also known as sea cows. And these herbivores will spend up to eight hours grazing on sea grasses and aquatic plants and may consume four to nine percent of their body weight in aquatic vegetation daily. They live and feed in the shallow coastal areas around Florida and in the rivers during the summer when seawater temperatures are above 70 degrees. They primarily feed on seagrass, mangrove leaves, and algae. And we've learned that it's really, really important to maintain these seagrass beds in the harbors and estuaries and bays all around Florida, because that's what maintains the ecosystem, is the nursery for the sea, is the food for these gentle giants, and keeps the water clean. And in some places, you'll see that the water where the seagrasses are is virtually crystal clear. Manatees during the winter time naturally migrate to places where there's warmer water. And this usually is inland rivers and springs, but as well as industrial discharges where the water is warm. Manatees, unlike dolphins and whales and walruses and seals, do not have a thick fat layer or blubber to insulate them from the cold. So they're very, very sensitive to cold water. Temperatures below 65 degrees can actually be fatal for the manatee. Manatees spend most of their time eating as well as resting in shallow water. They need to get air from the surface. So this is why they're often hit by boats and there's many, many manatee boat collisions that result in the death of the manatee. It's also not unusual to see scars on the manatee's back as it goes about its business. While manatees can stay underwater for up to 20 minutes, more typically they come up to breathe every three to five minutes. When they do come up to breathe, they'll break the surface of the water with just the tip of their nose, and you can see that their nostrils are controlled by muscles, and they can open those nostrils to gain air and then you can see them tightly close them by a muscular reaction as they go back under the surface. Manatees' ancestral backgrounds tie them to a group of 
organisms called sirenians. That includes the dugongs as well. And they're related more to elephants, mastodons, and woolly mammoths and believed to have descended from a common ancestor. If you look closely at a manatee, you can see that it has a prehensile upper lip and can use it much like the tip of an elephant's trunk to grab things and test things and pull up food. Each side of their lips can also be used independently as it helps them to gather up their favorite food, that seagrass that grows on the bottom. Manatee's eyes have fascinating adaptations as well. Instead of having a true eyelid, they actually move their muscles in a circular motion, much like a camera shutter, to close their eyes. It's very unusual. They also have a special see-through membrane called a nictitating membrane that they can pull down over their eyes when they're underwater to protect their eyes from damage. You'll often see people snorkeling or swimming with these gentle giants, but they're required by law to stay away from them and not interfere with them. They're very slow moving, and in fact, they have no front teeth, so they really couldn't even bite you if they wanted to. They're very, very gentle and non-aggressive. Manatee molars are constantly grinding food as they will eat for almost eight hours a day. And so manatees, like their elephant relatives, continually replace their teeth throughout their lives with older teeth falling out in the front and new teeth growing in at the back. Otherwise, they would just be ground away. So a manatee can live to be over 60 years old or older. So it's really important that they can replace those teeth as they do. Manatees have fascinating skin and the skin is constantly growing and flaking off. Manatees are fully aquatic. They never leave the water. They don't climb out on rocks and jetties. So with that skin being constantly underwater, it needs to flake off so that the things that grow on it, like algae and barnacles, will be released and not impair their movement. Another behavioral way to lose some of these hitchhikers on their skin is when these animals go from salt water to fresh water. The salt water organisms like barnacles and some other organisms that will grow on the manatees will actually die when they get to fresh water. So you can see this mottled appearance on the backs of these manatees, maybe some scarring from interactions with boats, and you'll see barnacles growing on them and that skin is constantly being sloughed off, so it really has a lot of different colors and patterns to it. Manatees generally swim at about three or four miles per hour, but they can have short bursts of speed at up to 15 miles per hour. And be careful if you're kayaking or swimming with them during the mating season, because they can cause quite a tussle. Manatees have two four flippers that they use for steering and underwater navigation and movements, but they are typically moved by their large, muscular, round tail fin. And it really is round to see. Manatees really don't have any natural predators, which adds to their law and lifespan. But on the average, probably only 50% of the manatees make it to be 20 years old. Manatees are protected by the Marine Mammal Protection Act, and they're considered to be a threatened species. And their threats to their species is mostly due to loss of habitat and these eelgrass beds where they live and feed. Manatees, like other sea life, are severely impacted by toxic algal blooms, whose cause may be related to factory farming runoff and nutrients and nitrates and phosphates that enter the water and stimulate these blooms. So it's awesome to see these manatees gathered here in the warm effluent of these power plants. Without the warmer water of Florida's springs and rivers, the manatees couldn't survive. So they're very, very cold and tolerant. Temperatures below 65 can be lethal for them. 
So it's our pleasure to be able to see them in these locations where they gather. So thanks for watching this special on the road episode with Nature Your Door here in Tampa Bay and of all places, this big power plant, but it's a fantastic place for manatees. And I hope you learned a lot in this video. Remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.